Welcome everyone to the Water and Sewer Meeting, July 16th, 2024. Uh, would someone make a motion? We accept the minutes. So moved. So moved. Okay, the minutes have been approved. Um, response from the red line in regarding the violation letter. Do you know anything about that, Mike? I haven't heard anything. Okay. And Tony either, huh? No. I, I'm, I don't think he's heard anything. Um, I think it's all still been, you know, he talked with Matt, the the maintenance director, and they're struggling with trying to find an engineer or whatever. But as far as any response from the letter, that the last one that was sent, I don't think he's heard really anything. So, uh, Jennifer, can you put that on the uh, the yeah. next month's uh, agenda because we got to stay on top of that. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden it just slides away. Oh, it's on Tony's radar big time. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, Park Street pump station online. I assume we're it is working it, and it's fine. It is. Uh, looks great down there. Um, we went down there, Tony, Mark, and I for a little lesson on the PLC and the um, the screens to go through for the alarms and all that. And we've actually had a couple alarms. Um, that I responded to. Um, Tony's been down at the Cape, so he gets them first and then acknowledges them through his phone. And then, um, so, but it's been, it was, it was just a simple little thing. I adjusted something in the PLC and knock on wood, we're, uh, it's, it's great. Good. We're good project great. finally done. Oh man, it's so nice. It's so nice and clean and just, you know, the other station's gone. And I don't know if you guys have been down there to check it out, but it, the grass is starting to come in. Uh, it looks good. The looks driveway, good. the driveway uh, apron was, you know, the uh, airport mix was put down. It looks really, really nice. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, did Tony say anything more about that timeline for the Glendale? That's in front of the... Um, Glendale Firehouse. There yeah, was... I know that he did the pricing on it, and I'm pretty sure Wilkinson is going to be doing that, but they want to um, let traffic cool down once the, the summer rushes over, and it'll probably be September or something when school is back in, and you know, it calms down a little traffic or whatever. Okay. And I know Wilkinson is, because we were doing a water line over near Mundy's, uh, next, right next door, Mundy's old house, Rhett's house. And he said that they were gonna they had to do the job down the street there. So good. Must, okay. Tony must have been talking with them about the <clears> project because <throat> mm -hmm. I want to say that's nine feet deep and they're in the middle of the road and it's gonna yeah be, yeah it's yeah. it's gonna be a project yeah yeah but a good one to get done yeah for sure. Um, sewer needs report uh, when we get it. Oh well, we got it. So. Um, John and Peter got it today. I got it. Uh, I just got it too. A, a while ago. So Jennifer made copies and stuff. And, yep. uh, a lot and, to absorb. And again, it's a lot to go through. Yeah. So we'll, um, um, we'll Jennifer, we'll put this on the uh, next month's meeting also. Um, the, this study and we'll begin yeah. hashing through this because it's going to take some time. Uh, and did Tony say anything? I talked to him briefly about it. Uh, the smoke test, but there was nothing with the smoke test they did. That I think we talked about that at a meeting or two ago. And um, yeah. I don't think any there was any there was no you know real huge discoveries, so to speak. No so. gutters smoking. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. Yes, it is. That's very yeah. good. Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, water supply study update. Is there anything, Mike, on that? That. Um, is that the map? Oh, oh, yes, yes, the uh, geological survey. So I had a conversation with David uh, Bout from um, the Mass Geological Survey out of Amherst. Um, he's going to be drawing up a uh, an agreement with the town, being that they are a state entity. Um, we don't have to do the whole you know procurement thing because they're a state they're a state organization. Um, I sent Mike, um, David actually sent me a, uh, a sample kind of, because they do a lot of work for water systems in the, in the state. Mm -hmm. And I want to say he sent me one from South Hadley from last year, and it's an agreement, a scope of work, all that. And I sent that to Mike and asked if that was sufficient. Um, so 
Uh, once we get pinned down, because we we told them we had funding, because that's one of their main questions was, you know, do you guys, mm -hmm. or do we have to go for grants? I'm like, well, you can go for grants for sure. I don't know how that, that takes a long time from on their end. Mm -hmm. um, so they will, we're going to go over that whole scope of work. We we generally had, we had a pretty good 20 minute Zoom meeting with Dave and another guy. Um on what they're going to do, what we're going to, on our end, what we'll be responsible for, like correcting, collecting all the rainwater, just dumping it in a container um, so they can check the isotopes. That's where that chemical stripped out of the atmosphere, and they can tell how, hmm. when the water is in the reservoir, they hmm. can tell how long it's been there and how yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So really uh, so great to finally uh, get the phone call or the Zoom meeting, I should say, and and uh, get everything all spelled out. We have our son that we go up to the Stockbridge Bowl with. We can collect some data with that with them. Um, access, uh, all that stuff. We, we got. We talked about all that. So no, no major problems that we can foresee for all of this happening. And it'll probably be over the course of a year with using some interns from UMass, which um, is good. Which is great. Um, and we'll be sampling at the, to save a bunch of time for people driving out here, we can go up and grab samples out of the feeder stream very easily and to collect the rainwater. So that's one thing that is going to be uh, a good money saver for them so they don't have to come out here all the time. But um, yeah, it's, I'm really excited about it. Uh, um, so we're, we're moving forward. Uh, I've sent them all the reports that we had a, a month or so ago. They've reviewed them all and um, hopefully we can pin this number down yeah. as best we can. That's so, going to be a good survey. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's something we've really been wanting to do for. It was really interesting too. They were showing me maps where these um, these ridge lines with underwater kind of aquifers, as Denny alluded to a while back, and uh, um, it's right through the middle of the lake. No it is right through where these formate these granite and these other formations. It's right through the middle of the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll do the you know um, drone thing with the thermal imaging um, in fall and spring when water's cold and warm and mm -hmm. see how many see how much underwater influence we have, which they'll be able to tell from sampling as well. It's a uh, very very interesting mm -hmm. to say the least. So I'm. Uh, just the report once we get it will be right. just what they showed me quick. I, I it was really interesting. So all of this is an effort to predict or project our water supply and yeah. where it comes from so that we have a better idea. And and where where it comes from, we know we are pretty confident we have a large underwater influence on that body of water. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's just stopped overflowing the other day. I mean, it's still I right to the top. By it yesterday, I would say last it's week. Still, it's still right to the top. It looks, it looks yeah. pretty. Pristine. And the Western, I got an email from DEP today, the Western region of DEP, you know, Massachusetts, basically all of Berkshire County and some little bit more is all in a level one uh, uh, drought warning. Mm -hmm. So... None of the rest of the state is just us, and we're full. So um, uh, we're lucky. We're, we're very lucky. But the the main the main thing is the safe yield number is what we can safely pull out of that lake on a daily basis and not really hurt our yeah. our supply. Which, like I've said quite a few times, anybody with a utility needs you know, their source is capable of. You know, whether it's National Grid or Spectrum or whatever. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, no, that's it. I go by. The We've been searching for this number for a long time, and I, I, I think this is our hopefully our answer. It's definitely going to get us some really good knowledge yeah. here. So, I remember one by um, yesterday, the day before, I looked out near the buoy, and a couple of big bass. Are, there must be some. So, you, if you stay there long enough on warm days yeah. like this, they're out of the water every they are, every thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah. Big yeah. bass out there jumping it. Yeah, and we were up at the Stoppage Bowl today, taking samples up there and doing our data collection for the the lake for the cyanobacteria and all that. And um, uh, the wa the water's still overflowing out of the spillway up there, uh, just barely, but it's it's going over. So, but you know, the clarity of that water is it's better. It was people. It was very very clear compared to when we were there in April. 
there was a lot of phytoplankton or whatever in the water up a very you could like we dropped that what's called the secchi disc and you just with a naked eye look down and see how far and then you take that measurement and it was six five meter five point something maybe it was four meters so like 12 or 14 feet we could see that disc down in the water last time we were there it was like was not very far. It was really murky in the spring when the ice came off. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, it is. But again, a lot, a lot clearer. And a lot of people think, everybody thinks when we were kids, you know, going up there and it was not clean. Yeah. But now, you know, maybe thanks to a little bit about the sewers around the lake too. So yeah. Yeah. That always helps. Okay. Um, the regulations pertaining to water sewer hookup to town mains and we talked about that and Mike sent us this thing which I really like that last paragraph. Yeah, I think it works well. And I really um <clears throat> think that we should adopt this. Yeah. Well, I think before we do that, I think it, it, this is good proposed language. Yeah. But I think um we want to talk to Mike Canales and have um town council review that. Yeah. And I do believe that this board can vote on this to add this to our regulations. Yes, I do yeah. too. I do uh, too. Uh, yeah, and publicly, of course. Right, and then mm -hmm. you can. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good point, Peter. Just to have Mike check it out, and then he might just throw it by legal quick and just make sure yeah, it goes into our rules and regulations. Could you do that? Certainly. Okay, yeah. and Jennifer, we'll bring that up on our next meeting also. Call and that's the regulations. On, get a cool vote on it then. Donnie Holmes's house. Yeah. Christian Hill, they're building back there. Did Have they applied for permits for Nothing. water sewer? No, not yet. Okay. Looks like a pretty big house. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was just, just wondering. Yep. Okay. Cross that out. Okay. Um, Hydrant flushing? Still at where we were the last time we had a meeting um, with all the stuff going on and backflow and... Um, and the guys are I'm in, the, I'm in the backflow of testing right now, hot and heavy, because it's the uh, this last month we can do it because I got to have five months in between the tests. So that's what been my focus. Um, so backflow testing and then next week I'm on I'm off and then I'll be back and uh, I'm hoping I can I should be able to finish it up. Not won't take too long. A couple days, probably. OK. All right. Um, any other concerns? Um, we have the, we read all the meters and Christine has the commitment ready for you guys to approve. That's why we changed the meeting to this date so we could have the information ready. So that's the water and sewer commitment um, for the board to approve so they can go forward with the billing. And we had some, you know, the typical 50 leakers. They'll send the, Christine and I go over the, a list of who to they usually send all the little bill inserts like you know you our meter reading at the time showed water leak. movement you got a leak you have your plumber and you know like red line in and austin rigs they're gonna they're constant so they usually do put them in but and we got we got a few meters that we've already fixed that we we noticed when we were reading had issues um like timmy minkler's insurance office they put the new water lines in must have got a little dirt in there and it made the meter got stuck and mm -hmm. water's still going through but we weren't not that he's a big user or anything but you yeah. know anyway we had a few of those we, we do every every uh reading um <clears throat> so you just did the stockers bowl yesterday you and or, i mean this morning today you and marky yeah, and um, yep, guy from uh, GZA and uh, Chuck, who brings us out on his pontoon boat. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So they um, and they're still harvesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't seen that. I tell you, the weeds. We are out there. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot. I, it's uh, it's, we're at the beach. Sometimes I'll just go to the town beach and. Uh, Certainly not the weeds that used to be. No. Um, yeah, and we're up there every morning cleaning up after the lovely yeast, but that's been uh, an 
effort there, but it's, that's all good. But um, yeah, uh, we were out really recognizing, especially on the backside of the island. And Marky knows a lot of those from weed harvesting for all those years. He knows the names of the weeds and he called it chara. And it's a, it, grow, it grows real low on the bottom, but it's like choking out the milfoil where, where it used to just be weeds right to the top. There's nothing there upset for achara, and achara is actually I was a kid. kind of a good thing. That's and the that one was, that fixes calcium, right? That's right. Yes, because yeah. yep. when I was uh, calcium yep. is the magnesium. Yeah, and that's what they uh, they look for that crystallization on that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you when I was a teenager, yeah. teenager up there when we used to be in the back of the island, we used to come up through there, you know, water skiing out in the lake, and uh, that was just solid up there. Yeah. We were in our canoe about a month ago up there, and. Backside of that uh, island is nice. Yeah, just got the little paths there where the lily yeah. pads aren't from the really, traffic. Really nice. It's beautiful. We were there this morning. It was yeah, great. That's nice. Okay. It'll be it'll be amazing. It'll be awesome when the jet dredging finally gets done. It's going to make that really, really, really nice. Yeah. Give it yeah. a lot more flow going yeah. through there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, with that. Do you have any comments at all? Yes. I do. So yes. two things. First of all, um, you know, my husband, Michael Nathan, is the one who is one of three people who do the harvesting. So they've been they have a great um, they work with with Hugh and the uh, uh, road department and um, they're out three times a week. So that's why I think the harvesting is really, you know, the um, health of the lake and all the weeds. It's being reflected by that great harvesting that they're doing. And I kudos to Hugh is that he got the harvester out at the boat ramp um, by Memorial Day weekend. So that's the earliest that it's ever been out on the lake. And they've been out there three, three times, two or three times a week harvesting. Yeah. So I think that's why you're seeing such, such a great improvement. Yeah. Um, and yeah. of course, it helps that the lake is high. So, um, and I shouldn't speak for Michael and for Stu and for Peter, but um, but I am because I can see the results of it and I'm glad that you mentioned it as well. So I can pass that on. And then the second thing is, is I'm wondering if you could share with us, so there are three members of the Lake Drive Association that are here on the Zoom. Um, we're not, uh, and I know that it, I heard that it hasn't been approved yet. However, can you read to us what the regulation is pertaining to water sewer hookups. So we have an idea, is that something that you can share? The water and sewer hookup um, information is on the, the water and sewer uh, tabs on the, uh, on the town website. Um, the applications are there and I'm quite sure that the, uh, the rules and regs, well, there's water main regulations there. Um, the one thing, and I don't know if you're alluding to uh, or talking about what we mentioned here tonight. That's what we're, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to, um, we're going to add some language in where we've, ha we've had instances, especially back in the old days when if somebody owned a couple houses next to one another, uh, they would run the water liners, you know, into their house and then they would just run it out of their basement to another house. Well, then years later it gets sold and another person owns it. And then, if something breaks, the water lines in the other person's cellar and it breaks in somebody's lawn and then there's a fight over who's paying to fix it. So we're trying to alleviate that because we it's always it's always it's it's a, like an unwritten rule. But um, we certainly feel the need in other towns. I talked to some other towns locally um, and they have it in theirs and we got some language from them and we're going to adopt that as well once we get the language pinned down and talk to town town administrator and whatnot about it just so it doesn't happen in the future even with sewer pumps and sewer lines and the houses get sold and then it's a it's kind of a nightmare we've been we've had some really kind of ugly situations yeah. over the years as houses get sold to different owners as time passes by it becomes problematic Billing becomes very problematic, especially if there's only one meter involved. Yeah. So essentially what the proposed regulation change, it's not really a change, it's an addition. It basically boils down to one dwelling unit 
one meter and line going to the main. The next one has their own and so on um, down the line. No shared um, sewer or water lines. Especially with different building lots. That's the main thing. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for clarifying that. I appreciate yep. it. I have I have read the, um, have been online to read the water sewer regs, um, you know, on the town website, but I wasn't sure what this pertained to. So thank yep. you. Yep, no problem. Okay. okay. Anything else? Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Make the motion to adjourn. No move. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go.